much old comics to read and collect. This is strictly comic books that I think come out that read really well and are worth collecting. Um, this 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 uh, comic book series, The Brave and the Bold, this is actually considered volume three out of all the different ones that they've made. So this came out in the year 2007. I was really happy to see A Brave and the Bold. I think uh, DC and Marvel do not do enough team-up books done with quality, let's do it this way, quality artists and quality writers because that makes a big difference. If you go back to the old Brave and the Bold stuff in the uh, 60s and 70s, 80s, you know, the Marvel team-ups, the Marvel Toon-1s, all that stuff. When they first started out, man, that was just pure quality. Stories fit, fit in well, the team-ups were reasonable. They were very well done and worth collecting. This series, I think, is made that way. It was made this way because you're looking at some of the great writers and artists at this time in 2007 doing the work in it. And they brought in a lot of uh, characters that I liked. And they weren't necessarily the top 10 characters that DC had all the time. They brought in some of the second and third tier stuff, which I personally think are good characters that don't get enough uh, print time except to you know renew their rights of their names. You're going to see artists like George Perez, who is one of the great artists out there in my top five. Jerry Ordway, who's a great artist also, runs along the lines of George Perez in very good detail and stuff. Dan Jurgens and a new guy, and I hope I don't destroy his name, but Jesus Saez, I believe, S-A-I-Z. Uh, he was a new artist coming up in D.C. He's over at Marvel currently. doing. He did some great Doctor Strange stuff recently, and his artwork looks just as good as it does here. has not changed at all, really, except maybe to get better. Uh, you have great writers like Mark Wade. This is back when he was at the top of his game still. Uh, and J.M. Straczynski, who was a you know a movie movie writer, director that came over to DC and Marvel and started producing comics. Um, these stories are great. Uh, I enjoyed reading them. I look forward to them all the time. Uh, a lot of them are single shot stuff. But like the first part, this first one that you see up in front, uh, which is Brave and the Bold number one, was a six-parter by Mark Wade and George Perez. Features uh, Batman Green Lantern, uh, Green Lantern Legion of Superheroes, um, you know, all sorts of different people all come together to fight an evil organization from the future, last I checked, called the Lords of Luck. After that, they go into like one-shot, two-shot type stuff. You may have a two-issue series, you may have a one-shot like the Superman, Catwoman below. But still, it's, it's great. George does beautiful work. He is just a great artist. Uh, his, you go in there, you look at it, it's like Crisis on Infinite Earths again. You know, just beautiful stuff. Jerry Ordway, love his stuff. Um, same thing, you look at his work and you think, man, why is this guy not drawing more? I know it's tough, but his artwork is just flat beautiful and he does not get enough credit for the amount of work that he does. Same thing with Dan Jurgens, and even so, I don't know how Jesus Sayas is doing in, in the world today of artistry, but I think he's a great artist and should be given credit for the fantastic art he turns in then and now. But still, it's great. You get to see team-ups of different types of people. You're going to see stuff like the Blackhawks, Phantom Stranger, Dr. Fate, Spectre, you know, just to name a few. Uh, they have weird ones like uh, the Substitute of Legion of Superheroes meets the, um, uh, what are they? Uh, Inferior Five, that's who they are. Boy, brain fart. Uh, Inferior Five, which was a funny book, you know, and it was kind of a humorous book, which is what that was meant to be. But I just believe that these books are very good. And I would recommend anybody who would want to read something that's just fun to read. I mean, it just it's a fun book to read. You'll read these things. Oh, man, these are good. The artwork's great. Story's fun. You just get to see these characters in a different light than the great mega series and during the regular series and stuff. You know, you get a chance to see some other people write and draw them. And I believe that this is a book worth getting and you'll find if you go in your comic book stores if you have some locally i hope keep my fingers crossed if not you go online you'll find this stuff is barely selling at cover price right now because it just wasn't a great seller at the time there was so much stuff coming out when these came out that i think it got lost in the mix and i don't think a lot of people you know promoted these things so i'm here to tell you i think these are worth buying and like I say, look around eBay. You could probably pick up a bunch from dirt cheap. Uh, go to your local comic store. See what they got in their dollar boxes, 50 cent bins, whatever. Um, 
definitely go on a sale day. You can still get this stuff cheap. They're only $2.99 cover price at the time. You could probably get them less than that. But it is my recommendation to pick them up. You can also get these in uh, trade paperbacks. I think there's about three or four of them that came out with these things in it. So when you go out and shop around, give them a look. See what you think. You know, I, I think you'll like them. I really do. Uh, let me know. If you do pick them up and you think they suck, let me know. I could be wrong. Like I say, I'm very partial to uh, DC, but I'm also partial to a lot of these characters. But I just think the quality was there, and it's definitely worth trying out.